All right, fellas, I just got to probably the best gym in Milwaukee. And I'll tell you why it's the best real fast before I get into the nitty gritty of what this gym has to offer. Let me tell you exactly this is, you wanna be a, a kick-ass gym that everybody wants to go to? You know what you need? You need a badass logo. Listen, when I see a logo like this, you bet your freaking buns I'm checking out your gym, okay? You got a badass logo, a cool name, sell some sick merch, you know what I mean? Look at that. <laughs> yeah, you bet your buns I'm gonna rep the animal house. Fellas, this is a real treat for me today to talk about a gym I worked out at 10 years ago when I lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Back in my day, this gym was located in, I believe, West Allis, Wisconsin. They moved locations to New Berlin, Wisconsin. Look at that freaking hound, okay? Look at the, the Karen signs or whatever on the wall. Um, God, these are really bad shots. I have oh, a couple dogs. This guy loves dogs, okay? Here we go. We're in the gym. Look at the freaking merchandise, fellas. Look at the hats. Look at the plethora of shirts. Then, holy freaking buckets. Look at this freaking merchandise shop, fellas. Okay, here we go. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty of things, fellas. Look at the size of these freaking lap pull down bars. I talked about in a previous video that today's day and age lap pull down bars. They're, they're freaking skinny, they're freaking narrow now, but they got these big, thick, they're not thick, but these wide boys from like the 70s. So I'm, I took one of the widest freaking bars, the wide boy here, and I'm maxing out the freaking lap pull down with the wide boy. And fellas, let me tell you something. This, I don't know why I don't see this angle lap pull down bar anywhere. The last time I saw one like this, it was a custom made lap pull down bar at a gym I worked out like 12 years ago. And I used it, I'll look at this real fast, okay? I put this in slow motion so you can see this guy was fish eyeing me, okay? And I was fish eyeing him back. Because I could tell he was just staring at me the whole time. You know, he thought I was some sort of, you know, douche influencer or something, but he doesn't realize that I was freaking out maxing this, maxing this stack out right in front of him. And you can see once I started doing that, he looked away in disgust and pity because he couldn't believe how much I humbled his ass. Um, but anyways, this guy, this guy kind of ticked me off. I'm not going to lie. He seemed like a sassy muffin. You know what I mean? And maybe he's a cool guy. Maybe he's a really cool guy. I don't know him. But fellas, all I can say is this guy was giving me a hard fish out of it when I was setting that camera up. And I get it. Look at the freaking length of that bar. But I get it. You know what I mean? Listen, a lot of times you go to gyms, kids are setting up their phones and stuff. They're filming everything. You know, they're freaking scrawny Johnny One plates. Okay? Listen, but I just... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just freaking spread my bat wings so wide in front of that guy, humbling his ass, okay? Look at this machine right here. I don't even understand what that is. I have never seen that machine before. So this gym is sickening, disgusting, freaking undefeatable in terms of the equipment. How Look at this. This is like the Ferrari of seated leg curls. Look at how freaking luxurious that seat is. Okay, everything here too, it's like, this stuff's like old school, but it's in pristine condition. Uh, this is a flex, flex leg curl, you know what I mean? Made in the freaking 80s or 90s, probably 90s. Great condition. I think a flex hip thrust, never seen that before, but hip thrust machines are stupid anyways. But look at this belt squat, never seen a belt squat like that. I think it might just be a hammer string belt squat. You know, I went through this so fast, I didn't get time to see brands on a lot of things. I do apologize for that, fellas, but you know, when I'm going through looking at the, a Rogers freaking and fellas, let me, you know what I mean? I know I'm all over the place here. I'm all over the freaking place. I'm trying to talk over. I'm trying to show you the sick equipment. But at the same time, let me say, a lot of this stuff's fun to use, but you want to make freaking gains, you just grab the heaviest weights, okay? So that's what I did. I grabbed the heaviest dumbbell here. Unfortunately, this is probably one of the downfalls of this gym. The heaviest dumbbell here only goes up to 140, okay? So kind of a peanuts weight, right? But I figure most of the times when I go to gyms, if I'm pulling, you have to just do the heaviest dumbbell uh, for rows, all right? And uh, I've kind of, throughout the years, you know, I did a lot of like cheat rows, croc rows with the straps and all that kind of stuff. You know, they're all good. I'm not going to say some stuff's a waste of time, some stuff's not. But when you're going to gyms, usually you're not going to get up to dumbbells 390 pounds or whatever. You know what I mean? So just, you know, I avoid the straps, work the grip. Fellas, look at this. Holy freaking buckets. I've never seen this before. This is like a chest supported row, but. I've seen, obviously, there's chest supported rows and stuff, but I've never seen a design like this with dumbbells per se. So I had to try this out 
I wasn't sure how this would feel, so I just grabbed the hundo. I didn't want to like separate my AC joint, you know, separate my shoulder by trying to swing the heavier weight side. I didn't know how exactly it would feel, but this is pretty good, fellas. It doesn't feel like a heavy T-bar row where it like crushes your guts and you know knocks the wind out of you. Like because it's a dumbbells, you can kind of move a little more freely. Um, moving on here, okay. I'm just showing more of the heavy duty equipment. Very wide pull up handles there. That's very, very appealing for the bat wing lats. Um, donkey calf raise. You know, that's always a good sign of a solid gym. Um, another heavy duty calf raise machine. You know, for the chicken leg incels that have poor genetics and need seven different machines to try to stimulate growth. Um, no offense, too, if you don't have calves. I don't know. I was just trying to think of a, a potent word for those lacking calf mass. Okay? Look at the hundreds everywhere, fellas. That's a, oh, listen, fellas, that's a lot of... Look at these. Are these freaking 100-pound bumper plates? I mean, that's... I've never seen bumper plates that freaking engorged and thick bulbous. Okay? Look at the... Look at the fixed straight bars here, fellas. They have, like, clips on them. Almost as if they're not even fixed. You know what I mean? It's like they just bought a bunch of straight bars and then put some plates on. That's like it's so old school that I love it. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not knocking it. I'm saying I love it. I feel like that's what how the fit how the fixed straight bars were back in the 70s. I feel like they probably were designed that way. And then you got your basics, you know, deadlift platform. Oh, fellas, the standing Dyna body standing bench press. That Brian Shaw obviously ripped off for the world, his strongman competition to make that an event. But let me tell you something. I've been a big fan of that for four years now. The first time I used one was my buddy's gym, Madtown Fitness in Madison. He had like the original version of it, old school. I couldn't believe the sensation of maxing out, pressing with all my cojones as I was on my feet grounded. Overhead triceps machine, fellas. What did I say? Overhead triceps machine. You can't find that at many gyms. That thing is freaking heavy duty. You bet your freaking buns I'm jumping on that sucker. Fellas, I've never seen this Atlas machine before. An Atlas Viking press. Give you a flex real fast. I think I'm, you know, freaking getting the... Actually, you know what? Because I have the filming. I'm filming. There's no tunes in the headphones, so I'm I'm gonna pump these out to silence with the ear muffs drowning out the radio that's being played. I think they're playing decent tunes. As I go to hit my set, the camera falls off, so the footage is you know dead and gone, I'm staring into the abyss of blackness before I finish my set. And I say, "Son of a freaking stick!" Set it up again. Have to do another set. But fellas, I've never seen a uh, unilateral Viking press, and because of that I used it in that fashion. Why would I? Why would I press it with two arms when this is a sucker, fellas? Pressing it like this, this single arm Viking or unilateral Viking press, iso freaking lateral. You can press it. You press it like a freaking kettlebell. Like you can get that sucker close to your you know, freaking pectorals. And you can get like a body gyration to hit every freaking head of the delt. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, I think I was catching my breath for a big papa. Was it eight or nine? Eight or nine plate. Freaking one rep max on this sucker. And then I strip it real fast because I think the owner was staring at me like, what the hell? He's probably never seen like eight or nine plates. I can't. I didn't count however many that was, but I'm sure he. I'm sure the most plates he's ever seen on that sucker was you know one or two per side. You know what I mean? So I had to make sure I want to strip those. I don't know. I mean, Atlantis is pretty heavy duty equipment, though. I know it can. I, I know it can handle some big arse weights, but you know this is fan. This is very nice equipment here, and I'm sure the owner obviously takes very good care of it. Not like I was using and abusing. I was certainly using it, but I was not abusing it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, just the the staples here. 
for the, the body, the Johnny bodybuilder staples, right? The hammer strengths, you know, you see these everywhere. There's a reason they're still around, though. They are good machines. Oh, there's the standing press. That's a great, I don't know why that's not more of a staple. These uh, hammer strength machines are in every gym, right? But the, um, oh, look at that bad boy right there. The freaking fly machine. I think that thing's a piece of junk. It looks cool. Fellas, there's a posing room and a tanning bed together. Talk about Meathead Central. You know what I'm talking about? You can freaking get a spicy tan and then you can go check it out in the posing room. Flex the striations. All right, I'm showing off this machine here, fellas, because it's a semi-supinated grip. I've never really seen semi-supinated grip row machine before. It's pretty cool. Check this out. I put this in slow motion. You can see the delts pop in this position. I just had to highlight that. That this is a, I mean, it freaking delts pop it. And I think it's because of that semi-supinated position that uh, felt really good. The only problem is this machine was maxed out and it was actually pretty easy, so. You know, they make these machines for the common individual. They don't really make them for a horse cock, you know what I'm saying? And it's a shame because this is all really good stuff. But like, for instance, that, that row is too easy, way too easy, you know? So, yeah, you can use a gym pin or something to put more weight on it, but then you're obviously running the risk of breaking the cable and injury. And, you know, it's just, you don't want to deal with that. So I don't know what tidbits you can give these companies to freaking ramp it up a notch, but you know, you should, they should, no matter what, set the freaking strength standards above and beyond what is possible for the human body. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if one person can do it, then two people can do it. Because if one person sees it, then that person believes it. If you believe it, you achieve it. It's like the thousand pound deadlift, like it never happened before one person does and all of a sudden there's a hundred people that are hitting a thousand pound deadlift you know what i mean that we just need to know the freaking human limits oh fellas look at this machine by what is this predator um the brand's like predator i can't really see because i'm doing this voiceover thing so all i see is this stupid volume equalizer in the way but i wanted to point out how i've never seen this predator equipment before this isn't it obviously this is flex but the Predator stuff is super heavy duty, very luxurious, like plate loaded, um, you know, whatever, Body Masters, whatever, a uh, nice little unique bicep curl machine there. Uh, very cool looking glute ham rays. I've never seen anyone like that. Just, you know, it's funky. Uh, and there's a whole cable stack here specifically for like a triceps push down. Wide grip pull down, pull pull up. You know, I'm sorry, pull down. It's like real jabroni there. Um, you know, the hundred pound plates, the hack squats, very heavy duty boxes. Uh, we'll zoom in on some, you know, safety squat bar there, cambered bench bar in the back. You know, we're talking about the specialty bars, fellas. You can't go wrong. Yeah, here it is again. What is that? Predator strength. Yes, fellas. This predator strength stuff looks very freaking heavy duty. And uh, if I ever go to buy more equipment, I might be a freaking predator, predator pride. You know what I'm saying? Look at this standing preacher curl, fellas. This is like, uh, that's heavy duty. You know what I'm saying? Not heavy duty, that's hard freaking core. It's like, okay, you're going to do some preacher curls, well, get off your ass. Get grounded on your feet. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand why anything has seats. I feel like all these machines should be freaking ground based. Dig your freaking toe claws in the floor. You know, twist, pivot, anchor, and freaking drive. You know what I mean? If we want to be a superior species, we need to get off our asses. 